Welcome back to Coffee Time. We took a little time off over Christmas and it's uh, time to get back to work and getting out weekly videos to talk about websites and apps and things that I think might be of interest to teachers. Um, this week we're going to talk about a website that I think every teacher, and I mean every single teacher, ought to have an account. And that website is Twitter. So for those of you who have an active Twitter account and you are using it all the time, you can just turn this video off. You're not going to learn anything new here. But if you're one of those people who set up an account but then sort of lost interest because you didn't understand it, or if you're one of those people who've been thinking about setting up an account but you're a little overwhelmed by it, or if you're one of those people who just adamantly said, by golly, I will not set up an account, I encourage you to keep watching this video. We're going to try to help you understand why you need to be on Twitter. So grab a cup of coffee and uh, let's relax for a few minutes together while we look at this website. Okay, this is my homepage, and you've heard me say before that I use Symbaloo, and, and uh, it keeps all of the websites that I use on a regular basis, the, the very top websites that I use, in one place. And right here is the little bird icon for Twitter. And so we're going to open that up. And just to start with, we're going to walk around this page for just a moment to kind of let you know uh, what you're looking at when you look at Twitter on your computer. Um, you'll see where it says tweets. This is the feed. And so as people send out new tweets to Twitter, the people that I am following shows up here. This is not every person in the world. Um, it's not, you know, every, every person in all different languages. Uh, these are only the people that I've chosen to follow. And you'll see if we scroll down, you could kind of glance at tweets as I'm talking. You'll see that they cover a number of different things. I follow educators. I follow companies. I follow uh, friends. I follow a number of different kinds of people. And so you'll see some tweets specifically deal with education ideas. Some deal with a particular app or website that I might be using. Um, some are news related. And then some are just, you know, people having conversations back and forth with each other that just happens to come to me. And so one of the things that often overwhelms people is that you have this incredible amount of information scrolling by you so fast it's hard to keep up. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that I've done, I'm approaching 10,000 posts to Twitter. Um, and and I, I don't post a lot, but I've been on it for several years. You'll see that I'm following 890 people, 891. And so that's a lot of people to come through this feed every day. Fortunately, they're not all on Twitter at the same time. You'll see that there are 989 people following me. Um, and I, I try to follow people who follow me unless they're just not interesting to me or if I am afraid I might get a lot of spam stuff from them. Um, and so uh, uh, continuing to look at the page in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see where it says home, and you'll see a little blue dot there, and that little blue dot tells me that something new is there. And in the feed column, you'll see that there are two new tweets that I have not looked at yet. And then there is the connect sign, and you'll notice that it has an at sign, that little A in a circle. An at sign goes before someone's Twitter name. So my Twitter name is T. Childers. That's my handle, if you would. Uh, and so if you were to send me something that you wanted me to make sure that I saw, then you would put at T. Childers and then write your tweet. And that would come up under this connect box and a little blue button would show up there telling me somebody has said something somewhere out there in Twitter land that has my name in it. And then next to that, you'll see discover and it has a little pound sign. We call that a hash mark. And a hash mark is something that you put into your tweet if you want people to be able to search for it and find it in a particular venue. Um, and so we'll look at a couple of those things as we go along. Um, you'll also see 
uh, sort of down here, uh, if I come down, there is this trends section. Um, and these are international uh, hashtags that are trending on Twitter that maybe millions of people are actually posting about. I don't pay any attention to that. Um, if I come up here where it says me, and I pull that up, then you'll see this is actually, if some were, someone were to search for me on Twitter, this is what they see. Not what I see, what they see. And they see tweets that I've sent out, um, and they'll also see down here um, things that I have retweeted, we'll talk about that in just a moment, from other people that I follow that I think are interesting and maybe the people that follow me might find interesting. Um, and so those are, th this is my feed right here. This is, if you were to find me on Twitter in a search, this is the page you would see. Um, and again, it's not what I see, but it's what you would see. Uh, you'll also see over here, because I clicked on me, that little menu in the upper left hand corner changed. And now um, I have this thing called a list. And this is how I control, uh, that's how I'm starting to control, I should say. I haven't used it very long. I'm starting to control sort of the monstrosity of this feed of hundreds and hundreds of tweets that come through, maybe thousands that come through in a day. I have a group of people that I've put together that I just want to look at a snapshot from time to time. And if I click on lists, uh, you'll see that I have this list I've, I've made up and it says interesting people. And if I click on that, instead of seeing tweets from all 900 people that I'm following, um, I will only see people that are in this group. And I can kind of catch up on what they've said through the day maybe articles they've read, things that they've put out there. And that's one way to sort of narrow down Twitter and to make it manageable, is to put in different kinds of lists. So my goal is to put in a list for people who are on Twitter at my school, um, a list of companies that I follow that maybe I'm using their app on my iPad or I have a program installed on my computer, um, particular people from the Discovery Educator Network, maybe a list of various conferences that I follow. Um, I can make a list for each one of those. And you'll see that I have 32 people in this list. And I have one person who has subscribed to the list, which means that because I have an open account that anybody can see, this person can also look at my list. So I'm sharing the people that I think are interesting. Um, at least at the time I put this list together. If you're not in that list, my apologies. Uh, you may be in the next one. So if I come up here, the other way that I can sort of control what I see is to search by a hashtag. And one of the most popular hashtags is um, EdChat. And if I just search for EdChat, um, you will see then that now in the feed, every single post, except for that top one that's promoted, every single post has a, a pound sign and ed chat in it. So as people make a comment that they want educators specifically to find, they might just include that little hashtag in their comment. Um, and so there are all kinds of hashtags that you could look for. One is, um, if I type in the word flip, you'll see flip class is one of the hashtags that's out there. So if you're thinking about flipping your classroom, <clears throat> this would be a hashtag that you could click on. And people that are doing this are posting best practices. They're posting videos that they've made. They're having discussions with other people uh, by using this hashtag. Um, they might be able to, to uh, meet at a particular time and use this hashtag to post things about flipping the classroom. And so by using the hashtag, you can narrow down what you're looking for and find information very, very quickly. Now, a couple of things that you'll see here. You'll see that there are 10 new tweets right here, which means that if I click this, I'm going to get 10 new tweets that have the hashtag 
ed tech. I mean, a flip class, sorry, flip class. Um, because it's constantly, Twitter is constantly updating, constantly bringing in new things uh, as people post them. It's real time, real world information. And as an educator, trying to figure out more and more about what's going on um, in our classrooms, being evaluated, having standardized tests, all the kinds of benchmarks we have to do, changing standards. We can come out here and find information on Twitter at, just like that. And, and I guarantee you'll find things that will help you. Um, if I click on the connect button, you'll see here these are people who have uh, either mentioned me or retweeted something that I put out. Um, and, and this kind of keeps me uh, up to date on people that are mentioning me. Also people that have followed me. So you'll see here, I've got a couple of people here who followed me. And when I clicked on FETC, that's a, that's a group in Florida. It's a technology conference in Florida. I decided to follow that. When I clicked on photo tips and news, it brings up a little summary here and I can determine whether I want to follow them or not. And because I am doing a lot of photography, I'll just go ahead and say, I want to follow them. Now they're added to that list. I cannot tell you enough about how important it is to have a Twitter account. Um, teachers are not only using this to connect with other teachers, but teachers are using this to connect with students. And so you could, instead of creating a personal account, you could set up a separate classroom account and, um, and you can make that a, a a private account so that people that are not people that people that you don't approve can't see anything that you post. So any in, in a private account, and you'll see here's one with uh, Mark Smith, who's a teacher at our school, and you'll see this little lock here next to his name, which means he has locked that account, and so only the people that he approves to follow him will actually see anything that he posts. So if you set up a classroom that way and then just accept your students in, then they can post things to Twitter and have a discussion in a classroom setting or maybe assign them a hashtag for homework tonight and say, I want you to, I want you to read this story in your literature book and then I want you to discuss it on Twitter and this is the hashtag I want you to use. I'm the teacher, I'm going to follow that ha hashtag and I want to see your username show up. I want to see that you are working on this and make that part of the homework. Uh, and maybe just put a mark that they participated, kind of keep track of that through the semester, um, and, and have them talk to one another, work through the problems that they're working through in class together on Twitter. Um, so there are a number of different ways to use that. I hope that you've gotten a little bit of information about Twitter and its importance and how easy it is to use and the fact that it can be overwhelming, but there are ways to narrow that down to make it very, very manageable. So if you do have a Twitter account, again, I'm T Childers, at T Childers. Look me up. Please follow me. I will give you a follow back, I'm sure. Um, and who knows, maybe you'll make it into my interesting list. Um, in the meantime, enjoy another cup of coffee and uh, go sign up for Twitter.